Welcome to Learn Electrics. If you are not in the electrical trade or you're new to electrics, some of you may be confused by the differences between ring and radial circuits. This short video should explain the very few differences that exist. The main requirement, regardless of what type of circuit you install, is that the fuse or breaker size is appropriate for the attached load and that the cable size is correctly chosen. We have kept this video as non-technical as possible, so let's begin. Keeping it very simple then, a ring circuit means that the cables are installed as a ring. They will leave the consumer unit, visit all the points of use for that circuit and then return to the consumer unit. And we will tell you why very shortly. With a radial circuit, the cables leave the consumer unit, go to the points of use and stop. The cables do not return. Here we are showing a radial socket circuit. In this example, the sockets are being protected by a 20 amp circuit breaker and wired in 2.5 millimeter cable. And these would be typical sizes. The actual fuse or breaker size is selected for the load or equipment that is using that circuit. Other examples of fuse sizes might be 6 amps for lighting circuits and 16 amps for your water heater. Choosing and calculating cable sizes and fuse sizes is the subject of another Learn the Electrics video that you may wish to look at. Radial socket circuits are becoming more popular in the UK. With more ways available in the newer consumer units, individual rooms or areas can have their own circuit breaker. Most radial circuits, though, will supply single points of use, such as cookers, water heaters, showers, lighting, electric gates, and so on. Here is another radial circuit. It doesn't matter to the electricity where you take the cables. In this example, the last socket might be very close to the consumer unit, and this does happen. Take the cable all around the lounge and the dining room, and we end up just half a metre from where we started. Remember this, and it will lead us nicely into ring circuits in just a moment. Let us think about why we have ring circuits for a moment. Ring circuits were developed towards the end of the Second World War. Knowing that there would be a need for a massive house rebuilding programme after the Blitzes, a government think tank looked at the most efficient and cost-effective way to install electrical circuits in the new houses. It was suggested by the think tank that installing socket circuits as a ring offered a lower cost solution and would support more sockets for a given amount of copper. Now, back to today because fuse sizes have changed since the 1950s. A radial circuit using today's breakers can support 20 amps of current with 2.5 mm cable. For a radial circuit to support 32 amps, in other words more sockets, the cable size would have to be increased to 4 mm. Bigger cable sizes mean more copper used and this was the problem for the think tank. But with a ring circuit, a 32 amp breaker can be installed safely on 2.5 mm cable, saving a lot of copper. Let's look at this in stages. Look at these two examples of a radial circuit. The top one is protected by a 20 amp breaker and uses 2.5 mm cable. The bottom circuit has a 32 amp breaker and must be wired in 4 mm cable. As we said, more copper. Now, imagine that the 32 amp circuit, wired in 4 mm cable, follows a route around the house and ends up next to the consumer unit. Here, the current flows out of the consumer unit, the breaker, and stops at the end of the circuit. There is only one path for it to follow. Suppose that we can connect to the end of that circuit back into the breaker. 
Now we have two cables coming out of the breaker. Current can flow along both legs. We have made a ring circuit and we can now use 2.5 millimeter cable instead of 4 millimeter. By just extending the radial circuit by perhaps a meter or less to make a ring, we can reduce the cable size, use less copper and save money. And now you can see that current or electricity can flow in two directions around the circuit. Because current can flow in two directions, we have effectively halved the current that flows along each leg. This means that, even at maximum demand, only about half the current flows in each cable. That is to say, about 16 amps. It's never exactly equal, but it is a lot lower than the maximum permitted in a single 2.5 millimeter cable. Ring circuits are typically used just for socket circuits. They have multiple points of use and a larger floor area can be covered by a ring circuit for a given amount of copper. There is, however, one major drawback with ring circuits that you must be aware of. Look at this slide of a radial circuit. The television is plugged in and everything is working correctly. Nothing is wrong with this radial circuit. And here is the next room, wired as a ring circuit and another television. Everything is working correctly, no problems. Now, let's introduce a problem. Somehow the cable becomes broken. The circuit is no longer continuous. With the radial circuit, the television and everything else after the broken cable stops working. That part of the circuit goes dead and the customer knows about it straight away. If we now look at the ring circuit, there's a break in one leg of the circuit, but the television continues to work, so how is that? Because there are two paths for the current to flow, the television still receives an electrical supply along the unbroken leg. The customer will not know that the circuit is broken, and why should they? Everything is working. And they will not know until you or someone else turns up to carry out a periodic inspection and test. Now you will find the break, but that may be 10 years or more in the future. And therein lies the danger. At 2.5 millimeters, the now single cable is undersized for the 32 amp breaker. If the circuit is constantly run at or near the maximum fuse capacity, then over time that cable will begin to suffer heat stresses, possibly overheat and possibly catch fire. For this reason, the continuity of ring circuits should always be tested on periodic inspections. A quick recap then. A radial circuit goes to the points of use and does not return. There is only one leg for the current to flow along. A ring circuit, however, goes to the points of use and returns to the consumer unit, so that there are in effect two legs for the current to flow. A 32 amp radial circuit must use 4 millimeter cable, but a 32 amp ring circuit can use 2.5 millimeter cable. Because we can use a thinner cable for a ring circuit, the ring circuit may use less copper than a radial circuit. And finally, a radial circuit with a break in the cable is easily noticed, but a ring circuit break may go unnoticed for many years. Well, there we are. The differences between ring and radial circuits in what was, we hope, easy to follow steps. If you want more in-depth information on ring and radial circuits, on selecting breaker sizes, on calculating the cable sizes, or indeed anything else about electrical circuits, then please do check out our other videos on YouTube. In the search bar on YouTube, type in Learn Electrics, all one word, and you will find our videos. If you click the subscribe button below, you will have access to all our videos and you will not miss our weekly videos when they are published. 
Clicking on subscribe also helps us too. Many thanks for watching. We hope that you've enjoyed the video and that you have added more knowledge to your mental toolbox. And we look forward to seeing you again very soon.